All right, let's make some filet gumbo. First things first, I preheated my pot over a medium high heat for about two minutes, then I added my oil. Once I start to see that oil smoke, that's my green light to add my flour. And now what I'm gonna do is going to whisk and make a cocoa brown roux, all right? Normally when I make videos, I like to cut it and then get to the final stages of it so we can get along with the video. But I want y'all to see how easy it is with me making this roux, all right? There is no cuts, this is straight through, all right? We are going to make a cocoa brown roux, all right? This roux should be the color of Hershey's chocolate. All right, it shouldn't be no peanut butter brown. It shouldn't be no white roux, all right? This roux should have some complexion to it. I'm talking Wesley Snipes type complexion to it, all right? That's going to give the roux the proper flavor that we're looking for, and it's going to help give it the body that we're looking for. I don't know who started this gravy gumbo style stuff, but that ain't right. A gumbo should have a little bit of body with some great flavor to it, okay? Now, when this roux gets to the color that I wanted to, I'm going to see a bunch of smoke that's going to be thick and cloudy, all right? Since I've been doing this for years, I keep making this roux on super high heat, all right? But when you first starting off, I want you to reduce your fire a little and then keep whisking until you achieve that color. The keys you want to do when making a roux of this color is you want to keep it moving. I prefer to use a whisk because when I started off, I used to use a wooden spoon and a wooden spoon used to fling root and I used to end up burning myself. But the whisk, I find it keeps it moving very well and you can get in those corners of your pot and it keeps the root in the pot and not on your skin. If you ever burn yourself with a uh, liquid root, you're gonna make that Al Green sound. Hot. I'm just telling you from experience, but let me show you the rules where we want it and this is perfect. Watch the color. Ooh, cocoa brown, that's what you want. Now it's important to move very, very fast and add in your trinity. That's your onions, your celery, and your bell pepper. And then we're gonna stir that together and let that cook for about three minutes. After that happens, we're gonna add our salt, black pepper, and then some cayenne. I know I added more cayenne than I had in that bowl after this was all over. Give it a stir and look at it. You see that? Beautiful. All right, now we're gonna add our chopped garlic and then we're gonna add our herbs, our fresh thyme and bay leaves, all right? Then we're gonna add some granulated garlic, some people call it garlic powder, tomato, tomato. And then we're gonna add some more salt, black pepper and cayenne. Give that a stir. And then we're gonna add our stock. You wanna add your stock in thirds, all right? That keeps it from being lumps, all right? If you get some fresh shrimp heads and you get your shrimps that's unpeeled, boil your shrimps in that water with the uh, scraps of your onion, celery, and bell pepper and make a homemade stock, all right? Perfect. So once we add all of our stock, then we're gonna add in our Worcestershire sauce. Give that a stir and then we're gonna bring it to a full rolling boil, all right? Once you get that full rolling ball, now it's time to add your sausage. If you don't have andouille sausage, but you like turkey sausage, use turkey sausage. Don't trip, use the sausage that you love. And after that, we're gonna add in our crabs. Do not be adding no King Alaskan snow crabs up in here, all right? You want a smaller crab to impart more flavor. If you wanna add more crab, add it at the dinner table. All right, then I'm gonna add a little bit of my Creole seasoning that I make myself, and then I'm gonna bring it to a ball and cover it for 30 minutes. After that 30 minutes, I'm gonna remove the cover and let it cook for another 30 minutes. And guess what? Once that 30 minute goes off, it is time to add our shrimp. We're gonna stir in our shrimp, and then we're gonna go ahead on and cover, and then let that sit for five minutes. After that five minutes over, it's time to eat. What you wanna do is you wanna taste your gumbo, add a little bit more Creole seasoning, a little bit more salt, a little bit more black pepper, garlic powder, cayenne, you know, get the flavor profile of where it tastes damn good to you, all right? When you taste it, go, mm, that's damn good, all right? Look at that gumbo, okay? Look at it, the crab's nice and cooked, you got a beautiful body, you have a nice color. Like I said earlier, I don't know who started this thick gumbo stuff. That is the reason why people say, give me more juice, then you got rice. They don't say, give me more gravy, then you got rice. We know the difference between gravy and juice. A gumbo is a nice broth 
that is flavored with um, herbs and spices, all right? Should have a, a brothy soup kind of flavor, even though calling it a soup is blasphemy. But I'm just letting you know, it's not a gravy. Then we're gonna go ahead on and add it with some white rice and some green onions. And then to top it off, we're gonna add the filet at the dinner table. If you add filet while it's cooking, you run the chance of creating a slimy mess because filet gets thick as it cooks. But that's how easy it is to make seafood filet gumbo.